Good morning, Peace family, and welcome to another chapel on this beautiful freezing cold morning. Uh, very glad that you could be with me and Mr. Prime as we worship God together. We've got uh, a, a nice little message for you today. We're going to have some fun, but we're going to begin um, by inviting God to be here. Uh, remember that when we use these words I'm about to use, we're remembering that we are baptized children of God when we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. Amen. All right, let's sing, Mr. Prime. I count on one thing, the same God that never fails will not fail me now. Won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. praise him right now by uh, by talking about him a little bit here. I want to talk about our ministry theme verse, uh, as you've heard probably quite a few times this year from uh, Paul's letter to Timothy, that uh, we don't have to be afraid anymore, because God's given us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And I want to, I want to share a story from Mark chapter 4 with you, a story that you've probably heard before. You actually ready for this? Um, a story that you've probably heard before uh, about Jesus calming the storm. Sounds like you've never even read this. Remember when uh, when Jesus calmed the storm? He was out on a boat with the disciples and uh, and a storm Boats came up. And Boats are fun. They were, they were afraid. Boats are a lot of fun. And, uh, oh, this coffee's good. You know, boats are fun. Do you smell that? Oh, coffee. Oh, I'm so yep. tired. I could use a cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. Mm. Bring, okay, I'm sorry. Excuse Coffee's me. Good. Distracted here. Uh, uh, 
Here we go. Jesus calms the storm from Mark oh, chapter 4. That day this morning. when evening came, the storms are fun to read he said though. to his disciples, let us I wouldn't go mind having over a storm right now, to the actually. other side. I do oh, love man. fall I, and the storms, I'm the so rain. It just it feels cozy sometimes. I don't know if sometimes. I'm sore or gassy or just, oh, nope, gas. And it's gas. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it's that gas. this morning. Anyway, I'm sorry. I keep getting distracted. Oh, bad. Um, leaving the crowd behind. Good thing they're way over there. They took Woo! him along just as that he is, was in the boat. That is the worst. There were also other boats with him. Boats? It's a marina if there's a, lots of boats, a right? A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. <sighs> Why am I thinking about football? Oh, the Packers God. play the Vikings this week. Yeah. The pa- Dude, the Packers Vikings. are looking good this year. Yeah, Mrs. hopefully Pearson, we don't I'm do sorry, it. We're going to score 10 up. points and not another one and lose to Tom Brady. I shouldn't be talking about football. I, should, I really do. I really am excited about the game, though, is the only thing. Anyway, let me, let me, let me think here. Um, I'm sorry about this. I just am distracted this morning. The, a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Swamped is a weird Jesus word. was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. Like the disciples Boop. woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Oh, I got this thing on my nose. Ah. He, he got up, rebuked the wind, and said oh, to the waves, I'm hungry. Quiet. It's early. Be still. I should have eaten breakfast. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I always skip breakfast. I tell myself I'm going to do this intermittent fasting thing. Spicy. And it doesn't work because I eat a whole turkey every night or well, we can't. six bags of chips. Anyway, can't I just need to start eating breakfast. I mean, that's why you're standing behind this thing. Oh, boy. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, mm. quiet, be still. Can't. I'm so hungry and tired. Then the wind Thirsty. died down and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Waves. Just when I thought you could... That's a funny movie. You know Satan, movie? get out of here! I... That's not very nice. It's a horrible thing to say is what you sometimes have to say to get the distractions out of your head. All right, so here's the thing, kids. Was that distracting? I, I know it was for me. Well done, Mr. Prime. I do um, what I do. Here's the thing. We, we wanted to talk today for sure about not having fear, but Mr. Prime came up with this cool idea that I don't think he's the only one, and I don't think I'm the only one that sometimes gets distracted when we try to dive into God's Word. Some of you are distracted right now. I'll be honest with you. I'm not in your classroom, and we're filming this two weeks ago, so I don't know what's going on, but I'd be willing to bet that some of you are distracted. I think sometimes when we go to church, we get distracted. Even I, Pastor Hauser, can sometimes get distracted in worship. Or sometimes when we go to pray, uh, we get distracted and we have these random thoughts into our head, especially, I don't know if you ever pray at night, but your thoughts trail off and you start thinking about homework that you have the next day or something that's coming up over the weekend and all of a sudden you're not praying, you're just thinking. Uh, and when uh, you read the word, Satan attacks, man, attacks us and distracts us with all different kinds of, of, of things from football games to hunger to, you know, the struggle with weight. Unbelievable. From a skinny guy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I could deal with it from some, but, but, but seriously, we get distracted in so many different ways. And it's good to just be aware of that to some degree. Um, because the one, the, the one thing that we need to do if we're going to fight the enemy, we need to know who our enemy is. And our enemy is very real. And it's not flesh and blood, as the Bible says. It's not people are not our enemies. Satan is our enemy. Sin is our enemy. Our sinful flesh, these things are working against us to keep us out of this powerful word because this is where we receive that spirit of power and love and self-control. It's in his word, so Satan doesn't want us in his word, which should make us want to be in it all the more and to be undistracted when we are. And so just a few thoughts about how to become undistracted when we're, when we're trying to be in his word. Uh, you know, first of all, when you're trying to pray, for instance, it's a really good thing to fold your hands, um, not just because it's something we do, but because it keeps our hands from being distracted. It's good to close our eyes, 
not so that because we have to be so holier than thou or whatever, but, but because it keeps us from seeing things that would otherwise distract us. When you're going to read the Bible, you shouldn't necessarily do it while you're sitting in front of the TV or when you have your iPhone in your other hand. You should turn off those devices and go to a quiet place and close your eyes, fold your hands and say a prayer and ask God, keep Satan or Mr. Prime away <laughs> while I'm trying to be with you. It's a beautiful thing to be alone with God and, and to watch him speak into your life and speak truth. This Bible story that we didn't really hear is really a beautiful one about how we have no reason to be afraid because no matter what storm you have going on in life, and we all have lots of storms, especially this year, God's always with us. He's always with us. He's with us through his word. He's with us through the sacraments of baptism and communion. He's with us in and through each other. And so just keep that in mind whenever you're reading the Bible, whenever you're praying. Um, God wants to be with you, and he wants you to remain undistracted. And that is what we're going to aim to do here right now as we praise God again together. Uh, while we praise God in this song, Eye of the Storm, appropriate for the Bible reading, we're going to collect our chapel offerings, which are going this year, or this quarter rather, to uh, Old Town Christian Outreach, who, like Heart of Saginaw, are doing some awesome things in the city of Saginaw, and we've partnered with them so that we can love on the least of these. So you guys collect those chapel offerings and do so as undistracted as you can while we praise God in this song. When the solid ground is falling now from underneath my feet, between the black skies and my red eyes, I can barely see. And when I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family, and I can feel the rain reminding me in the eye of the Let's bow our hearts together. Fold your hands, close your eyes, and let's pray. Father God, we are just so, so incredibly thankful for who you are and for all that you do for us, for the gift of each other, for the gift of chapel, for the gift of peace, for the gift of our family, our friends, our clothes, our houses. I mean, God, you are so good to us. And yet you wouldn't need to give any of that to us. You've given us Jesus, and through Jesus you've given us forgiveness, life, salvation. All that we need we already have in Jesus, and yet you bless us time and time again. And we are so, so thankful, Lord. We ask, God, that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit and keep Satan far away so that we might be undistracted, God, undistracted in, well, in all things, Lord, in our studies, in the way that we love each other, and especially when we come to be with you. Keep Satan far away. Keep our eyes fixed on you. Keep our mind fixed on you. Keep our hearts tied to you. 
And Lord, as you fill us up, as you lead us and guide us, may you send us out into this world that so desperately needs to know about Jesus. And through us, Lord, may may they meet you. We pray this all in the powerful name of Jesus who taught us all to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This last song you've heard all year, boys and girls, and you're going to keep hearing it because it's true. We are no longer slaves to anything, certainly not fear. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song. Of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. Sing it, kids. I'm no longer a slave to fear, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave. My mother's womb, you have chosen me, oh love has called my name, and I've been born again into your family, your blood flows through my veins, sing it like you mean it. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Let me hear the eighth graders sing. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. Listen now. You split the sea so I could walk. Perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and say, Oh, I am a child of God. Here we go. Oh, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, yeah, I am a child of God. Oh, I am a child of God. Oh, I feel so good. We love you so much, Peace Family. Go about your day undistracted. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.